excited is playoffs and stuff, but it's also going to be kind of sad being the last home games and playing in front of uh, friends that I've met for the last four years. This best of three matchup starts tonight at 8 o'clock at the BU Gym. Health Minister Dave Chomiak was on hand to talk about the accomplishments in health care he was the most pleased with. One of these was the new Brandon Regional Health Center buildings, which he and Caldwell toured earlier in the day and were very impressed with. You don't get a... At each end of the arena, the musical line forms the swinging gates. Wearing their always familiar red coats and broad-brimmed Stetson hats, the 34 members of the RCMP musical ride put on a great show from start to finish giving everyone the chance to experience a piece of Canadian heritage. I think it's a great change of duties from uh, working and doing, uh, you know, real police work, and that's the word some people use. You know, we get to travel all over Canada, all, all kinds of communities, whether it's a city like Brandon or a tiny little community. We get to meet the people, talk to them, and, um, you know, maybe they have a different perception of uh, talking to a policeman after we leave, and that's really what our goal is. For every rider, getting to take part in this historical performance is a great honour. However, for Constable Rob Bell, last night's show was a little more special than others, having been born and raised in Winnipeg. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to see a lot of familiar faces in the crowd, and I've already seen some here around the stable. So it is, it's definitely very comfortable for me to, to come here and see those faces, and uh, I'm really going to... I'm looking forward to, to doing the show in front of all those people. The musical ride has been entertaining crowds across the country for over 100 years now. And although not much has really changed about the ride itself, it still remains as popular as ever. They did the wheel thingy. <laughs> when they had the horses going around and all the spears were in the middle. It was cool. I liked when they got like sorted. They were like, it, it was really cool. They're, and then when they charged, <laughs> it was cool. And it was really cool. In Brandon, Tyler Crayston, CKX News. They make it as real as possible, and for Kaylee Robertson, that's exactly how it felt. Take all that stuff. Take all that stuff. Here, you think. It was real to me and I mean there's that little voice in the back of my mind that's reassuring me that it's not real but it was just the fear that I'm so lucky that if it was real I knew that so much worse things could have happened to me and just being taken away from the group it made me feel really vulnerable. For hours the students trek through the desert enduring rebel attacks, difficult terrain and landmines. Okay, hang on, everybody stay here. I need help! She just covered a landline! She's over there! Okay, go check it out, I'll hold them here. Just to see what's happening in our world, like, we have it so nice in Canada, and there's so many kids that wish they could even go to school. Like, we might take it for granted, but it's just a little taste of what they go through every day. It's all part of the Canadian Red Cross 24-hour exile. For the weekend, the students get to really see how it feels to be a refugee seeking safety. One of the benefits for students is that they see uh, what these people have gone through. So when they meet immigrants and refugees on the street or in their schools, they have an opportunity to, to understand and empathize more with these people. And, and so we hope it builds bridges between communities. To add to the reality, some of the volunteers are real-life refugees. They talk to the students about the difficulties they faced trying to escape their country. Most of the people don't know about the refugees' life. That what is the refugees' life? I mean, uh, maybe they are thinking everybody is coming like a landed immigrant. The airplane is ready and just they take their luggage and to fly from the country, but the refugee life is very different. This is the first year the camp has been put on in southwestern Manitoba, but hopefully not the last. And as hard as this experience has been for these students, it's something they would definitely recommend for others. I definitely tell other people to go and see what it's like, and I definitely think I'd support like more programs and stuff like this. Never look back. Walk out straight and start running. Get up! Right! At the Spruce Woods Provincial Park, Aaron Harrison, CKX News.
Well, I'm just, I'm just very sadly shocked. You can hardly believe it. Shock and disbelief is what friends and neighbours are feeling after learning about the brutal murders of Doreen and Noel Jobert. The couple were found dead in their home late Saturday night. Neighbours became suspicious after not seeing them for several days. Anytime there's a murder, there's, there's a degree of violence and uh, I'm not sure what degree that, that, that is with this particular incident. But of course the autopsy will be able to give us a better uh, detail of what actually happened. After finding the bodies, police started looking for this man, Paul Jobert who is the son of the two victims and the lone suspect in the case. He lived a few blocks from his parents. We have forensic evidence uh, that was uh, found at uh, his residence that directly linked him to the crime scene. Dr. Noel and Doreen Joubert were always very caring and gave him as much support and help as they possibly could. The elderly couple, who were both retired doctors, were described as quiet and pleasant and their tragic deaths has shaken this quiet neighborhood. Sheer devastation. Just absolutely devastated. They were wonderful people and he was my doctor when I was a little girl and... Well, obviously my phone's been busy and uh, both friends and, uh, and partners are just sharing their news and sharing their grief. They can hardly believe it. An autopsy has been completed, but the results have not been released. Police are still on the trail of the suspect. His whereabouts are not known at this time. In Brandon, Tyler Crayson, A-Channel News Now. An autopsy has been completed, but the results have not been released. Police are still on the trail of the suspect. His whereabouts are not known at this time. In Brandon, Tyler Crayson, CKX News. It was a tragic day that changed the lives of many people across the world. And although it's been three years since the terrorist attacks on the United States, no one has forgotten. It's very, very emotional. I've been watching this procedure. I watched the morning that it all happened from Edmonton. I was, uh, it was very early in the morning and uh, we were very struck by the effects of those terrible incidents. It's something that's seared in your memory, uh, uh, watching those planes go into those towers and, and the Pennsylvania and, and uh, Washington, D.C. and, and uh, Bali and all the other places around the world where this has happened. Over 150 people, including many public officials from both sides of the border, attended the memorial service and spoke about how precious peace really is. We can never forget the events of three years ago today. We must always commemorate the lost lives and the lost hopes of so many families. And we must rededicate ourselves to the demo democratic values that we share between Canada and the United States. And when your friends are attacked, you are attacked. When your friends grieve, you grieve. And so I am honored to be here and to say on behalf of Prime Minister Martin and the government of Canada and the people of Canada that uh, we are there and we will be there for you and uh, we will never forget. Part of the ceremony was the unveiling of the headlines of history that features the front pages of 31 U.S. and 19 overseas newspapers reporting on the events of September 11th and will serve as part of the Peace Garden's 9-11 memorial. Over time, people develop different opinions, different thoughts, different views. This takes us back to what it was like that day uh, and helps us to, uh, to remember both the heroes and the victims. I only hope that through this place, somewhere, sometime, we can affect that change into a more peaceful, understanding, goodwill among peoples and nations and so forth. That's where we're headed for. That's what we want to do. The new exhibit will tour various parts of the province for the rest of the year and will become a permanent part of these facilities sometime in 2005. At the International Peace Gardens, Tyler Crayston, A-Channel News Now. We'll correct the gun, turn this sucker here, and then once, once we have the bearing right on there, then we'll, we'll turn the barrel of the gun until it's like crossed.
Brandon Hardy has always been interested in the military and feels that going to the 26th Field Artillery Regiment open house was a great way to find out what a soldier's job is like. There's a whole lot to learn. That's the beauty of it, is that there's, there's, many, different, there's many different jobs you can do and, and many different things to learn, and that's why, actually, that's why I'm here too. I enjoy learning and, and I enjoy learning about these things. Put the magazine in, lock it, hit the forward assist, aim on your target, and fire. The main thing that we're hoping to achieve here is to let the people of Brandon know that the armory is here and that uh, it houses the army reserve for the city of Brandon, which, um, you know, I, I think there's probably a lot of people that really don't understand that. So um, it's, a, it's a good idea for people to know that we are here. Another purpose for the open house was to provide people with information on the Army Reserve and to give those who are interested an idea of what jobs are available. There is a different opportunity available if you're someone who doesn't want a full-time career in the military, but it's um, a part-time, maybe uh, help them get through university or finish high school, stuff like that. It's a really good opportunity that way. In Brandon, Tyler Crayston, CKX News. Are you ready? Yeah, I don't want to be in any pictures though. Okay. Good morning, King George School. King George Elementary's Evelyn Clegg loves working with kids. Okay, let's go. And she also loves to run. So when the opportunity came to teach kids to run, elbow action, use those quads, short steps. The fit seemed almost too good to be true. I came to work here about 13 years ago. I was already running. Uh, a couple of kids saw that I ran. Uh, they asked me if they'd come out with me, and it kind of mushroomed from there. What it's mushroomed into is a small army of kids who think exercise is cool. They train three times a week all spring long and then compete in the relay event at the Manitoba Marathon at the end of June. She's a good instructor and taught us a lot of pointers about running. And... It's fun. <laughs> um, she's a pretty good instructor. She gives us lots of pointers. Sometimes she can be strict, though. Oh, wait, everyone excited about that? No. no. Okay, we're gonna do it anyway. At least we're going down the hill. Okay. Uh, just to give you an idea of Evelyn's dedication, yours truly wanted to cancel the story today because of the weather. Uh, Evelyn said, forget it, I'll see you down there. Uh, Clegg says too many kids these days are not exercising. Child obesity is on the rise and kids just don't pay attention to being physically fit. Now that's part of the reason for the club, but not the only one. Okay. With a few clues and a few hints of how to run uh, and be more efficient at so it, make, it makes it easier for you, and that uh, um, you feel really good about yourself when you finish. Uh, it's a great self-esteem builder. And we're just going to do a couple of uh, loops of the school. This year's Manitoba Marathon is on June 26th, and you can be sure, thanks to Evelyn Clegg, this team has done their homework. Um, yeah, as you start to appreciate how many air miles it is and how few prizes and how many people go through a Safeway store on a, on a given day and through all of the stores on a given day, that's pretty